Welcome to the spooky season, everyone. Let us start off with something scary. Things you didn't know about this bug boy. Hey folks, Marsico X here. Yes, indeed, it's Halloween week, and it's terrifying to think that there are some things that I wasn't sure about my favorite villain. It scares me to the core that I didn't know. Stuff about Perfect Cell. So how better a way to celebrate this time of year, as well as getting over the sudden surge of sugar in our systems, because I know you probably had your trick-or-treat candy early because you probably can't trick-or-treat right now, than to bring up some facts about the spookiest, Marjan Boo would like to discuss this point though, Dragon Ball villain, Cell. I think it's safe to say that I'm a little biased here in that I really do like Cell and all of the transformations that he has had, even the fourth one. We'll get into that one later if you're not quite sure. They all have their quirks, and it makes me smile, the, that fourth one for all the wrong reasons. You might remember that we did something similar to this with another character in the last few months, Freezer. Obscure facts about him. We had a lot of fun with that video, and we recommend that you give that video a watch, as well as this one, as there are tons of things in them, and things you might not have known about the best land shark the galaxy had to offer. But Freezer isn't our topic of conversation though, Cell is. So here's some obscure information that you might not have known about our favourite resident Bugman. To begin with, Cell's conception might quite possibly be one of the most arduous things that Toriyama has ever had to encounter. It was nowhere near as simple as it was with Freezer. He was pretty well formed right out of the gate. At this point we all probably know Cell's troubled past with Kazuhiko Torishima, the infamous editor who butted heads with his charge Toriyama on many occasions. For the right reasons though, to be fair, he was only trying to get the best out of Toriyama possible by making him challenge his own concepts, not just sit on his laurels, pull even more out of the figurative bag. And it didn't help as well that Toriyama made him time consuming to draw all of those spots on his body. That must be so hard to animate. But despite all that hardship, Cell's design clearly has inspired a plethora of creatures that came after him in various mediums. The first form in particular is perfect, ironically, of instilling creepy vibes as well as the animalistic tendencies of the villain. He is desperate to seek perfection as well as the tools needed to survive and thrive in its environment. Much like most simplistic creatures on the planet, it's all about survival because that's not guaranteed. It seems like Toriyama ultimately liked the design even though it took hours of graft to come up with, since we can see a lot of Cell's influence in both Lavos from Chrono Trigger, that came three years after our Bugman's debut by the way, and Kalasmos from Dragon Quest XI, who might not have spots per se, but definitely has a lot of Cell-like inspirations. So there is a lot of confusion about whose DNA exactly makes up Cell's genetical makeup. It's implied many times that Cell possesses techniques from the entire dragon team. Now, while this is sort of true, just because Cell has these techniques doesn't mean he also has the DNA of that person to boot. It's like a two-tier system within Cell. In Android ABC supplement, it is explained by Toriyama himself that Cell was created by combining the genes of Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Frieza, and King Cold, as well as maybe some other life forms in some various ways, not maybe necessarily DNA. The five though are the core contributors to this makeup, and I'm sure that some of you will be surprised by the lack of Gohan and Trunks in the mix. But as Cell himself explains to our resident time traveller, Dr. Juro's supercomputer had already collected enough Saiyan DNA and did not need more of it. Two fifths of that was already in Cell's makeup, and from the two best sample providers possible in the form of full Saiyans. Gohan and Trunks in the Doctor's eyes were surplus to requirements. Oh, Jero. Gohan's rage boost would have been very valuable in a higher dosage. Also, it does seem like the human warriors aren't there in any shape or form used to create him, as they would have been mentioned as being part of his makeup. Humanity's strongest warriors? Nope. They don't get a look in pretty much. The other life forms may indicate the source of aliens more alien-esque traits. That would explain that. So Cell, especially Perfect Cell, is also known for having a lot of contradictions and plot holes connected to him. And we did talk about some of these in a previous video, in which we discussed what we liked about Boo and didn't like about Cell. Being very honest about this one because I am biased about Cell, I really like him. But let's go over some more of them here. 
The first one that was present in the original Japanese version is connected to the infamous nuclear situation. This gesture being possibly one of the most infamous in the series, right alongside the extending of the arms of Frieza that is his quintessentially. This was supposedly a part of Cell's head, this nucleus, and allowed him to regenerate. Thanks Piccolo. Well, that's all fine and dandy, you might be able to expect that. Except, we can see Cell losing his head for a moment. It's not there, literally. In the midst of his fight with Goku, right when he got blasted in the face with an instant Kamehameha, right at that luscious jawline. This is a rare occasion that Toriyama is actually trying to fix a plot hole, having possibly noticed this happening. Maybe somebody telling him before you know, they went to the anime. Kakarot tries to fix this plot hole by stating that, oh, Cell must have lied about this fact. We don't really know what to think about this particular chestnut. I mean, it is interesting that Goku tries to verbally explain away the narrative flaw and all, but we don't really have any evidence to say whether Cell was lying or whether he was actually telling the truth. But then we have the dub making it even more complicated, saying that he only needed one living Cell to be able to repair himself. Tub, please, please do not make this more confusing than it already is. Let's get to the next plot hole, which is the fact that Cell does benefit from his Saiyan power boost, or Zenkai as we call it in the fandom, after his self-destruction, which is... That's not exactly how it works. How doesn't it work like that exactly? Well, since it seems to be a self-inflicted wound. Cell blows himself up. It shouldn't provide the potent increase in power or any increase in power. It goes against what Saiyans know. This is something that we know since Vegeta explained it, how Zenkai worked in the Namek Saga and how it was imperative that Krillin had to do the damage to him to receive the boost. He may think this is open and shut and that we've discovered something big that will utterly wreck Cell's credibility and integrity, but don't jump to that conclusion just yet. It should be noted that Cell isn't a full-blooded Saiyan, or even half a Saiyan. He is mutated, artificially created organism who just so happens to have quite a bit of Saiyan DNA mixed with others, an amalgamation of many different species and entities whose DNA and makeup would be utterly unique and never before seen or spliced. It's a completely new life form and we do not know how exactly the traits of other races work for him with Saiyans in these quantities. It's possibly Toriyama's oversight, but one that can easily be defended within the law. It's certainly easier than trying to explain away the nucleus situation, to say the least. We're also not sure if Perfect Cell can still absorb people or not. Granted, it's clear that the need to absorb people isn't needed when he gets to his top form, as his tail is no longer present at such a length. Instead, just being a little opening which can... birth Cell Juniors. But this isn't quite the case, because take this next bit with a pinch of salt. We actually see him with his full tail attempting to do that absorbing people, the likes of Goku and GT. And Xenoverse 2 and Shin Budokai also confirm this, that this happens as well. And yes, I know what you're going to say, this is GT Masako. It's something that was seen though, and something that you might not have remembered from watching the show. Or hey, it might be totally new to you because some of you might never have watched it. I mean, we do have some more evidence from a more recent source that does seem to put this discussion to bed though. Yeah, it's just something they thought was cool. For example, in Dragon Ball Fighters, Cell does claim that he lost this ability to absorb biomass from people, and his tail no longer works that way, instead acting as a canal for any potential little sprogs. I think we'll all feel safer if he can't drink people anymore in his perfect form though. It also makes more sense with the nature of this form. You can't really make him perfect-er, right Yamcha? Still though, the idea that offspring can come out of his… Well, that, just Ugh, it's a ghibli ghibli, so ripe with that thought. Speaking of video games, the English cell has slight vocal problems within these, especially the earlier entries. As Dale Wilson and Damien Clark gave each cell's form a distinct voice, this was a different means of vocalization from the original source material. But this wasn't the case with Norio Wakamoto's original rendition of the character though. There were no differentiations, because in that, there were no changes at all as cell evolved. Wakamoto sounded pretty much the same, the same glorious tones between all the different forms, and yes, it does sound a little strange to 
in Perfect Cell, having a really regal voice like Perfect Cells, and Wakamoto rolling his R's in an all-time impeccable, beautiful fashion. But this all caused a lot of trouble in game production though, such as the Budokai series, since his screams of pain in those games will always sound like the imperfect one, the first one. The files or coding to change it weren't there, and they didn't have time to fix it, or weren't inclined to fix it. Either way, there was no chance at all for different cells to sound different. And as you can imagine, there are no extra voice clips for his transformations, they're not just tacked in there just in case, since the game wasn't made with multiple cell voices in mind. And so we can hear good old Beak Cell scream coming out from the perfect jaw, for all three Budokai games. It might also explain why we don't see the first two forms of cell playable as often these days in more modern games, it's just perfect cell. Hmm, think about that. Moving on from his voice to his body and his jawline, the only part of Cell's body that doesn't change between his transformations is this bit, the diamond shaped plate on his chest. That central shape is with him the entire time. But why is that? Well, what's interesting is that he seems to inherit this particular body part from Frieza, and sure enough, this statement was true from our favourite Space Emperor as well. We seem to mostly think that it's only Frieza's cordial personality and sophistication that Cell possesses, but no, there's more Frieza in there to tone down than we first thought. Also, we like to associate Cell with the idea of wanton rampages, much like the future androids would do in the history of Trunks. To us, we liken Cell to examples of city-wide destruction and terrorising cities all over the world. But the truth of the matter is this, that out of all three main villains of Dragon Ball Z, okay, four if we count Vegeta, his body count is actually the lowest. Yeah, he certainly got some jollies from drinking and blowing people up, thousands in fact, mostly off screen, civilians, but this is small fry in comparison to the other baddies of Dragon Ball Z. Vegeta, Frieza, Boo? They were known to destroy entire planets, galaxies, their populations gone without much trouble or consideration. So in comparison, Cell was pretty merciful. And if you really want to rub salt into the wound, Nappa killed more people probably than Cell. Yeah, Cell, all I gotta say is, you're not trying hard enough. Cell was relatively merciful, but in truth, he was just really focusing on something else, wanting to fight the Dragon Team, only drinking enough people that was necessary for him to survive, be strong enough, mount a charge against this team, and succeed in absorbing his siblings. He wasn't interested in destruction, but truth be told though, Cell's particular way of eliminating other lifeforms might have been the most graphic. Yes, I know, Boo did the whole thing about eliminating other people, but that's kind of typical, if you want to call that typical in Dragon Ball. Cell's though, that's a slow, painful way to go, especially for the poor money man. Next, way before the fandom had started with the what if craze that we proudly cultivate today, Cell was given a rather obscure alternative version of his story in the 1995 arcade game Dragon Ball Z 2 Super Battle, quite possibly one of the earliest examples of what if in Dragon Ball going. Like, this might be where it all began. In said game, if we beat the story as Goku, Cell will be given a sensu bean, after which he promises to return and wreak his revenge, sort of like what happened with Piccolo Jr, without a Lord Slug to be seen. We are then greeted with a flash forward to seven years later, and given a group photo of all Z fighters. And Cell. Is this the OG what if Cell turned good here? Well, not exactly, because there's another person in there too. There's this weird looking Dr. Jiro over there. But still, it's a very Goku thing to do to give Cell a sensu bean, because yeah, it happened in the anime. Also, it wouldn't be a Cell list without the notoriously infamous Cell X. Yeah. We're going to be going into Heroes Country here with this one, and this is the form of Cell which I can't help find utterly, utterly endearing, despite the freakishly large and hideous design. I mean, come on, is this supposed to be scary? I don't find that scary. I find this scary, but not that. that, that that's kind of against what Cell is. But what is Cell X? Cell X is a special Dragon Ball Online form, and now is in the hero stables of Bonkers Creations. That was created by Toa's Resurrection, and meddling with the character for her own ends and deeds. 
not only doesn't he fight directly within the series, but he spawns his own bio-androids to fight for him. He's basically now like the Slurm Queen or something, a queen ant, spawning out worker cells to do the job for him. The Dragon Ball Heroes Dark Dragon Ball version of Cell X is apparently in constant pain. All the time. Jeez. And last but not least, one of the funniest semi-official what-if stories regarding Cell going appears in Dragon Ball Z Budokai, where he accidentally absorbs Krillin instead of Android 18, and gets turned into Cellin. I remember this one, seeing a picture of this in a video game magazine, I think it was CDG or something like that, and my mind was like when I first saw that at the age of 15, WHAT IS THIS CREATURE?! In this form, Cell isn't as strong as he once was. If you want to find an equivalent, Think of Goku, Hercule and Goku. When Cell's like this, Selen isn't even able to defeat Yamcha and is destroyed by Tenshin Han's Kikoho. Oh, the irony. It turns out that the whole sequence was a nightmare within Cell's mind as he had fallen asleep during his wait for the Cell games. Yeah, Cell can dream. And that's that. We hope that you liked these facts and that there are at least one or two things from this list that you didn't know about the Bugman himself. Did we forget something? Do you have something more interesting and more interesting info about this guy? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!